Well, it's so good to be in the house today, and uh, I want to welcome those who are here in the building. We we'll welcome our online audience. Uh, this is a new reality that we're living in, that the majority of our church is watching us online. And I want to say welcome to you, whether you're in your living room, at home, or if you're watching this uh, in the future. Uh, we, we are excited for what God is doing. I think this is that we have reached more people than ever before. House lights need and, to And uh, I, I wanted to, you, you guys remember, there would have certain Sundays. I remember growing up on certain Sundays where, uh, y'all remember Sunday night church? Anybody remember Sunday night church? When you, when you went to church in the morning, then you went home and you ate some good food, you took a long nap and watched the football game. And for us, it was watching the Miami Dolphins lose. And so we needed to go back into the presence of God. We, in Miami, we needed Sunday night church right? because we were discouraged. We needed the joy of the Lord. And so I remember going back to church on Sunday nights. And, uh, and so for us, it was, it was the first Sunday night of the month. It would be testimony night. And it, it, it would be a time where we just share testimonies of what God is doing. And, and it was based off of the scripture in Revelation 12, where it says that the people of God who was going through all type of stuff, I mean, all type of persecution, and the world was falling apart around them. And, and, and the scripture says, and they overcame the, the world and the drama by the blood of the Lamb, the work of the cross, and the, the works of testimonies. And I think that sometimes, like, we just kind of, we, we, we forget what God is doing. We forget what, what God is moving into. So I, I, I just want to share a few testimony what God is doing. Because what these testimonies is, is a window to what God can do in your life. First one is this. This was a young, a young lady who had uh, just got a, her dream job and, uh, here and that attends our church. And she says that my job given me, had gave me a signing bonus. And I decided to tie that entire signing bonus to the church. And when I did so, it was crazy, Pastor. I got an opportunity to buy a house that was worth $375,000. And the owner um, reached out to me specifically and said, I will sell you the house for $200,000. She now is living in a house that is valued at $395,000 that she paid $200,000 for. And I want to give God thanks and praise for this amazing miracle in my life today. Now, that is awesome. Isn't that great? That is amazing. I have another parent who has a young adult in her house, and young adult has been, uh, there's been a lot of uh, friction there. And she says, Pastor, uh, you preached the last sermon in the book of Nehemiah series, and our entire family watched the service together. And ever since that moment, me and my young adult child, we now have a solid relationship. Two weeks ago, she came to me and said that she's ready to pursue her dreams and goals. And prior to that, she was unmotivated and had no dreams and no goal, goals. There had been tons of conflict in our family because of this, but now she's motivated, and I really believe that that motivation only comes from one person, and that is Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? That is so good. Last testimony I'll share with you. Uh, Pastor, I have been having a lower back pain for the last six months. I've been going to chiropractors, going to doctors, trying to figure out what's the next step for me. And I'm proud to let you know today that I went back to the doctor and the doctor says he does not know what happened to my bulging disc. It is back into place and there is no issues with my disc. I have been pain free for two and a half weeks and for that I can only thank God. Isn't that awesome? Come on. The healing power of God. And I just wanted to share those quick testimonies. I'm sure there's a lot more out there that I don't know about. But I just want to let you know that God, is, He's moving, and He's not dead. And I know, like, world, the world around us seems like it's falling apart, but can I tell you that our God is in the background moving? Like, your God has never, he, He's never stopped moving in your life. And when it seems like it's uncontrollable, right? Even when you're questioning God, and I, and I want to let you know that it's okay to question God and ask God, God, why is this happening? 
God's not afraid of your questions, but even in the midst of your questions, God is moving and He's doing something amazing in your life. And so I just wanted to, to do that before we get into the Word of God today. I want to, if you to open up your Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 10, the book of Mark chapter 10. I want to, I want you all to put that scripture on the screen for me. Um, I, I feel like today's message is, is such a pivotal message for our life and the life of our church and um, we're still been in a series, Slow Down, and I'm not sure how long we'll be in it. I've never been in a series this long. This is the longest we've ever been in a series, but uh, this, has been the, 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 this has been the cry of my heart. Uh, if, if I can be just quite honest with you, in the last uh, six weeks since we've been in this series, I've gotten more opportunities than I've ever had before. In the last six weeks of this series of Slowing Down, you would think that I would have you know, less opportunities, because I've been literally in a slow pace um, in my personal life and uh, saying no a lot more and, and just leaning into my family, leaning into the kids, leaning into my personal devotional life. And you would think that, you know, less will come out of that. But actually, in this season of slowing down, the Lord has opened up some great doors. And I say that all that to say is that this slow down series has been the greatest thing that could ever happen to your pastor. I think it is the greatest thing that ever happened to our church because I really believe there are some clear words from God that I would not have heard if not I didn't slow down. So even in this next season, I, I, I'm pretty clear about where the church is headed and where we're going. I've never been so clear about the, the vision of our church. And even in uncertain times, I, I feel like we're going to reach more un, unreached people than ever before. I believe that we got a strategy now to reach young adults and youth. I believe that we're going to love on families like never before, and I have a vision for all that stuff, and, and it's only happened in this series of slowing down. And the whole, the whole crux of the series has been this, that, that the, the pace of the kingdom is different than the pace of the world. The world is fast-paced. It's, it's moving, and, and it's, it wants you to be tired, and, and, and the kingdom pace is slow. And I, I've been saying this all the time in this series that the greatest things and miracles of God they always come in a slow. They always come when you, you didn't expect it. It always comes after a season of faithfulness and of prayer and of, uh, and of fasting and of waiting on God. And I just come and let you know that our God doesn't operate in the fast track. He operates in the slow. And everything about our lives and the way we are wired in our American culture is about fast. How can you get fast money? How can you have fast satisfaction? How can you have it right now? And I just come to let you know today that today is a day that we make the shift from the pace of the world to the pace of the kingdom, slow pace. So I want to read to you this scripture. It's found in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. It says this, as he, referring to Jesus, was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him. I just want to kind of give the, the kind of background. Sometimes like the, the English language doesn't do it justice about what happened. But actually in the Greek, it's almost like the man ran up to him frantically. He, he, was, he, was, he was excited. He, he had energy in his body the way the Greek kind of describes that. And he says, a man ran up to him and knelt before him violently. It was almost like it was a violently knelt before Jesus. And he asked him the question, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, what he was saying is, in that, in that day, eternal life was a different concept in the way that we view eternal life. For us, we view eternal life as the life after we die. For them, in that culture, eternal life started right then, and after your body dies, it was a continuation of what you were experiencing on earth. So that's why when Jesus says this, to, to bring heaven on earth, what he, what he means is that the, the life and the blessing that you get in eternity can start right now. So in our limited brain, we think that eternity starts when our physical body dies. But here in the Scripture, especially in New Palestine, for them, eternal, eternal life started when you accepted Jesus right now. So, I, so it was an amazing concept because the concept is this. Maybe we, what we've been waiting on for when we die, we can actually experience it right now. 
So this is why Jesus says, when you pray to me, make sure you pray that eternity don't start when you die physically. Eternity can start right now for your life. You can experience all the blessings of heaven right now. That's what he's saying. So, so it's good teacher, what must I do to have this life that starts right now, that continues on to after I die? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. AKA do not lie. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, teacher, I kept all these things from when I was young. So what he was saying, so Jesus was setting him up. So Jesus was a... <laughs> He was the ultimate setup God. He was set you up. And so what he was doing in this text, what he was, he was trying to, he was trying to kind of bring this guy in because he knows, oh yeah, checklist Christian, right? You know the checklist Christian? I go to church. I do this. I'm nice to people. Checklist Christian. And I'm not sure how many checklist Christians in the building are watching online, but you know those who just check, check, check. Okay, yeah, I did that. I'm good. I'm in. I'm in. And, and and so I, I don't think that Jesus was saying that the checklist Christian don't get you into heaven. I don't think what he was saying is that the checklist Christian don't get heaven to you right now. What I mean is this, is that you can do all the checklists and, and when, you, when your physical body dies, I believe that you're going to enter those pearly gates. It's going to be an amazing time. But what Jesus is saying, if you want it to start right now, it's got to be more than a checklist, Christians. He says this, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, teacher, I've done this, all these things since I was a young kid. Looking at him. So notice, so, so notice that the Bible is very unique in its details. It says this, looking at him. It's almost like, so beforehand, he wasn't looking at him. You know, it's like, it like Jesus was talking generally to the whole crowd. It's like, hey, yeah, by the way, you got to... You know, you got to just, you know, obey your parents and don't kill, don't steal, don't lie. God says, yeah, I've done all since my youth. And then Jesus kind of, it caught Jesus' attention. He said, hey, okay, come here. I think he's calling us in right now in this very moment, even online. Hey, come here. He says this, looking at him. So how intense of the look that it had to be that the author of the book of Mark recognized the look. Think about it. There, there's... There's hundreds of people around. There's lots of stuff going on, lots of noise going on. How intense the look has to be that the author recognizes Jesus looking at him in the midst of a large crowd, looking at him intently, focused. He says this, Jesus felt a love for him and said to him, there's just one thing that you lack. One thing that you lack. Go and sell all you possess. Give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. And the baby said, Amen. Come on, somebody. But at these words, this is probably one of the saddest scriptures, saddest sentences in the entire script, I think. So it's one of the top five. They've got to make the top five. Saddest sentences inside the scripture. It says this, but at these words, the young ruler was saddened, and he went away grieving because he had owned so much property. This is so sad that the rich young ruler knew that he was missing out on what God had for him. But his heart was so entangled with the pace of the world that he could not slow down enough to tap in into the pace of the kingdom. And today, I want to talk to you about that. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you speak right to us for the next 20 minutes, God? Lord, we, we need to hear from you, God. We don't need to hear from me. So bypass my thoughts, limited wisdom and understanding so your people can hear a word straight from God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. That was a long intro. Man, that was a long intro. Uh, Ed, are you tired? Man, you, you've been working out, so you, you, you'll be all right with those muscles, man. You'll be just all right, brother. Um, I am excited for today's message. 
a phenomenon um, that we have in Scripture, that we have in our culture, rather. Um, it's a cultural phenomenon that has been in the hearts uh, of men and women since the beginning of time. I, I, I want to talk to you about something that uh, we, because of this phenomenon, we have made bad decisions because of it. We have, uh, we have gotten jealous or envious because of it. Um, we have said yes when we should have said no because of it. And uh, I am talking about this one idea and phenomenon that we call FOMO. Anybody know what FOMO is? FOMO, fear of missing out. And it, it's, it's, this, it's this phenomenon that we all live in. It was like this, this fear of missing out. In fact, one study says this, that the, the, the definition of FOMO is, is uh, based off the, the computers of behavior science. It says this, FOMO is this pervasive apprehension that others might be rewar having rewarding experiences from which one is absent. Meaning that FOMO is this thing in all of us that when we look at someone else's life, and it's so easy now to have FOMO because of social media, when we look at someone else's circumstance or possession or life, and we feel like we are missing out on a feeling or an experiences or experiences that, that you don't have. So that's when FOMO comes in, where you have this fear that rises in you because you feel like you are missing out. The, the idea of FOMO is, is, this, is this force in all of us that makes us afraid that we are missing out on something that is good. Have, and, and so ha have you ever struggled with FOMO? Have you ever had the idea of FOMO? I know I've had plenty of experiences of FOMO. I mean, there's been plenty of times I've had FOMO. I remember one time a couple of years ago, I was watching the football game and, um, and I was enjoying myself. I was grilling some hot dogs in my grill and it was on a Saturday watching some college football. And I never forget, I saw my friends on Instagram at the football game that I was watching. And so I saw them in the crowd having a good time, and it was an amazing experience. It was so awesome. And FOMO instantly hit my heart. So I text all of them. I was like, hey, I'm mad that y'all invite me. I'm like, what's up with that? And I was all petty, and I was just kind of, I was very uh, upset with them. I said, wouldn't it the next game you guys going to? They all said, hey, we're coming here next week. So they say, hey, we got these uh, discount on these tickets, but you can get this, this, these tickets, but they're going to cost you a lot of money. And my FOMO caused me to spend a lot of money on a football ticket, football game ticket. So I go, I go to the game, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited for this because the FOMO had hit me the previous week. I'm excited, and we're tailgating, and uh, it's fun, and I spent all this money. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, anyways, you know. In FOMO, but YOLO, you only live once. So come on, somebody. So I just did that. So I was like, hey, you know what? It costs a lot of money, but you only live once. So I remember going to the game, and I remember I got hungry at halftime, so I went, and I had to wait in this long line. It was hot. It was sweaty. People were cursing. Half of the people were drunk. And I would go up to the concession stand. I ordered a hot dog, and a hot dog cost quadruple the amount of the pack of hot dogs that I had purchased the week before when I was at home. And then I go out to the game, I watch the game, and it was a great game, but then we had to wait in long lines to get out of the stadium, and then we finally make it to our cars, we're waiting in traffic for an hour, it takes us so long to get home, and then I get home super, super late, and then the next day I got to come preach at service. And I realized that my FOMO had tricked me. You ever been tricked by FOMO? It, it had me excited about this one experience. And then when I got the experience, I was like, that's not all that it's supposed to be. Right? I, I remember one time I was waiting in line for a long time last year for this famous chicken sandwich that Popeye's had. I'm waiting in line for a long time, and I'm used to Chick-fil-A lines. But you got long lines, but you are moving really quick. It is fast-paced. And so I said, you know what? 
And my FOMO kicked in because everybody was saying that this Popeye chicken sandwich is the best thing since manna from heaven. And if you take a bite out of it, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come on you. But I didn't realize it that I went to a Popeye's so that the anointing of the Holy Spirit didn't come in me. It came out of me. And it was so bad. I waited in line for a long time. And although the sandwich is okay, I realized that it does not compare to the glorious anointing that Chick-fil-A offers. Can I get a better amen in the place today? <laughs> And I realized that I waited in the long line, spent all that money. Here's why, FOMO. And oftentimes in the world that we live in, I just come and let you know that the way that God wired you and wired your heart and your mind, he wired you so that we can have FOMO. And I just, I just think that we're living in a culture where FOMO is so pervasive, and so as a result, we make bad decisions when it comes to relationships because we are afraid if we don't compromise our relationship that we might miss out on being married or being in a relationship. So we compromise, right? And so, or maybe when it comes to our finances, FOMO kicks in, we buy that house or we buy that car or we buy that possession because everybody else got the nice car, the nice house or nice possessions. Nice clothes, nice shoes, and you don't have it, and you're afraid that when they were wearing their Jordans, they have a certain experience in their life and a change in their life, and that when you buy those Jordans that you make a whole bunch of money because of it, and it makes you play like Michael Jordan, I kind of let you know that, the, that those shoes are just shoes. Like, you can go to Payless and buy, well, you can't go to Payless no more. When you go to Walmart, you can buy some shoes, and if you go to Jordans, you can buy some Jordans. Can I tell you, they both would do the same thing. Can I just kind of give you insight? FOMO can trick you you. And here in the text right now, there is a, this is a classic experience of FOMO. This rich young ruler was afraid of missing out. He was afraid that he may not have the fame anymore. He was afraid that he may not have the money anymore. He was afraid that if he engages in what Jesus commanded him to do, that he will miss out on all the stuff that he worked his entire life for. And this FOMO caused him to walk away from the greatest thing that God can offer him. And today I just come to let you know that God wired you to have FOMO and the, the baby is shouting me down and better than any one of you. Bring that baby up front. Come on, somebody. And, and I just want to let you know that FOMO is, is a thing that God gives us, but it's not meant to keep us away from the things of God. In fact, FOMO was meant to bring us closer to God. FOMO was meant to be in our lives so that we may be afraid that we miss out on the plans of God, that we may be afraid that we miss out on the presence of God. FOMO is in our life so that we may be afraid that we miss out on the purpose of God. My greatest fear is that God wants to do something miraculous in my life and I miss out on it. And so now my fear is not that I keep up with the world. My fear is that I may not keep up with my God. And oftentimes what happens is that we want to shortcut God's plan because of FOMOs in our lives. And so therefore, we take the shortcut routes when it comes to relationships, when it comes to finances, when it comes to our dreams and our callings. And we don't want to take that slow kingdom route because FOMO will speed you up. In fact, some, some of the greatest marketers, right, uh, they begin to give the secrets of their and uh, how they get you to buy some, some stuff. How they get you to use up and run up your credit cards and get into debt and all this stuff. They, they have given the secrets. And the secrets are this. Number one is that they show other people buying the product first. And so what they do to awaken your FOMO is they say, everybody else is buying this too. Everybody else is getting married. Everybody else is having kids. Everybody else is buying that dream house. Everybody else is getting that nice car. Everybody else is in a relationship, so you got to do whatever it takes to get into a relationship. Everybody else is in a relationship but you. So that's what they do. They try to, cre they try to create that FOMO in your life, and a FOMO begins to, uh, begins to thrive in your brain, and then you begin to feel like everybody else but you. And that's what FOMO does. The second thing that these marketers do is that not only do they show that everybody else is buying them, what they do is that they highlight missed opportunities in their messaging. So what they do is that they say, hey, if you don't get this, you're going to miss out on this. The other day I was watching a, a commercial 
<laughs> and uh, it was commercial with McDonald's. Um, and they said that if you, and, and they were talking about like a, the McRib sandwich that they have. Can you imagine make, buying a rib sandwich from McDonald's? Could you imagine what is that made with? All type of, uh, I'm not going to go there because McDonald's might sue our church, so I'm not going to go there. I'll just imagine what in the world could they possibly make a rib sandwich in 30 seconds? But that's neither here nor there. And they said that if you don't get the ribs, the McRib sandwich, you are missing out. And in my head, I began to slow down and process what they said. So if I don't eat a processed rib sandwich and I could just go down the street to Mission Barbecue and get a real rib sandwich, I am missing out. You right, I'm missing out. I'm missing out on a heart attack. I'm missing out on a, a, a gained weight that I don't belong on my body. I'm missing out on unprocessed, crazy processed food in my body. You right, I'm missing out. But here's the deal. In their marketing, they want you to make a decision right now. So, oh, I got to go get that McRib sandwich. It's only here in the summertime. So another thing that they do is that they show that stock levels are low. Supplies are limited. You better jump on it right now. I remember I went to a school called South Eastern University, and the ratio of our school was it was uh, to, to one female, there were four guys. It was, it was crazy. So when you were a, uh, uh, to, sorry, it was the opposite. It was one guy to four females. So the females were acting crazy over the guys because if you did not Make the decision to date that one guy. You may not have another chance to date that another guy in your entire life. So I remember like girls like just making crazy decisions like, oh, I got to be with him no matter what. There's only, there's only, it's not that many guys here on campus, so I'm going to be single my whole time on campus. And I can't be single the whole time on campus because, you know what, only guys live on campus. So you can't find a guy outside of campus at all, right? Um, that's what they thought. And so the supplies was limited, right? You know, oftentimes you hear commercials say that supplies are limited. And oftentimes it's crazy how marketers use that concept that, that supplies are limited. But can I tell you, they're not limited. There's a lot of stuff in their warehouse. They're just using that to get you to buy right now. Another thing that they use is that they, they make your... Um, they make the visitors watch the clock, meaning what they're saying is that it's only going to last for a certain amount of time. This deal that we're going to give you is only going to last for a certain time. You better jump on it right now because if you don't jump on it right now, it is going to go away and you will never ever in your entire life be able to buy those shoes or buy that house. And that is a lie from the devil. And then they promote experiences. They, they, they try to say that if you get this, you're going to have this experience. The, the crazy part is that not only does this expose marketers and their businesses as they try to sell their products, I believe that this idea, it exposes the work of the enemy as well. Because what the work of the enemy wants to do is that he wants to make you think that you got to do that right now. You got to pursue that right now. You got to have that person right now. Because if you don't have it right now, you may never have that person right now. So if you don't have that satisfaction right now, you will never have that satisfaction right now. If you don't do that right now, you will never have it. And what the enemy wants to do in your life is speed you up to make you fall for these tricks. And so what happens is FOMO arises in your life and therefore you make quick Fast-paced decisions where God says, I want you in the slow route. Because when you're in the slow route, you begin to question all the things and the tactics that the enemy uses to cause this FOMO happen to your life. You begin to question it. You begin to say, is that really true, it's Satan? Is it really true that I'm going to have more satisfaction if I step out on my wife? And I cause this dysfunction in my family, in my marriage, and my whole career dies in the drain if I step out? Is it really true that if I act a certain way when I'm in college and sleep around and do all this type of stuff and, and go out and, and do all in drugs and stuff like, is it really true my life would be better if I lived that way? 
Or is, is it really true if I, if I buy that nice brand new car and my payment is only $650, it really don't matter. I make $1,200 a month, so I got it in my bank account. So I might as well just get it right now. And if I buy that really nice car, my life's going to be so, so much better because, you know, with my time in the car, the car's going to massage my back and everyone's going to think I got money and they think I'm cool. So therefore, my life would be better. You begin to question everything when you're in the slow route. Is it really true, Satan? Is it really true? I know for me personally, if I could be honest and transparent with you, I got to question that all the time. FOMO arises in me. Oh, is it really true if I have that type of church that my inward life would be better and that I would be so happy and that I would just be go, go lucky and everything would be perfect in my life? You know, you know, I thought FOMO hit me, y'all. I thought like many years ago when I thought I was going to plant a church that I thought that it was going to be like just awesome, that it's going to be easy. Oh, we're going to start a church, and we're going to reach people, and it's going to be great. I can't wait till I start a church. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. And then I started the church. I said, I could have waited. I could have waited. I could have waited. Because <laughs> it's just life FOMO will trick you. And what happened in the scriptures right now, here in this text, is the ultimate FOMO trick. FOMO made this rich young ruler think that he was going to miss out on something. And he did not realize what God had for them. And it's my desire today to reverse the FOMO. I mean, it's kind of culture. It's weird. It looks different. It's not the same. But what if our fear of missing out is on the things of God, not the things of this world? What if we fear missing out on God's purpose of our lives and we get to the end of our life and said, we made a lot of money, we had a lot of fun, but I missed out on my purpose. What if we fear hearing God's voice and we miss, we were busy doing this and that and God was speaking to us the entire time and we missed out on it. What if we fear not seeing God's word and God could be speaking to us right through his word and we've been so busy watching the latest show, seeing the latest update that we miss out on the word of God that could be in our lives? What if we fear missing out on God's presence? You know that presence that will change your life? You know the presence of God when, when the one lady who had the blood the issue with blood, she touched the, the hem of God and she was healed right then? What if we fear missing out on that? I believe this. If we reverse the FOMO, our lives will now change because now we now no longer fear missing out on an opportunity because that we know our God is a God of endless opportunities. Because if you do a compare and contrast of what the rich young ruler was suffering from, if you do like, okay, let's just compare it, right? If he went back home to his riches, he had a lot of money, he had a big house, he was famous, and he was a ruler, he had people looking up to him. But if you compare to what God was going to offer to him, Initially, it doesn't make sense because initially the rich young ruler thought about, okay, I'm leaving my fame to nobody know my name. I'm leaving my money to Jesus at time was homeless and had no place to rest his head. I I'm leaving my big houses to now living in tents. And initially you would think that the rich young ruler would be like, no, hey, I got to stay here. But really behind, behind that, behind the homelessness and behind the lack of money, there was something that was so much greater than what can be offered to him. And that was purpose. And that was life. And that was freedom. And that was life eternally right now. That's what he was missing out on. But he just couldn't see it. And sometimes for us, we, we miss out on the things of God because we do a compare and to contrast and we see the world's pace has this, but God's pace has this. But behind this, there's something much greater than beyond that. I remember I went to this uh, uh, white elephant Christmas party. You know those Christmas parties where you do like a gift exchange? You know what I'm talking about? Like you, you, you kind of go out and you do a gift exchange. And, and so we have different gifts that they have, right? And uh, this one guy... Uh, uh, there was this one guy who, you know, the, 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 the amount of money we were supposed to spend in the gift was 50 bucks. 
So a couple of people went above and beyond, and you're not really supposed to spend more than 50 bucks. But this one person brought an Apple Watch. And so when we first opened up the Apple Watch, like, oh, I'm going to steal that. You know, and uh, we were so excited. And so I was able, what was that? What not that scared me like Jesus? Uh, <laughs> So anyways, I, I was so excited about getting this uh, Apple Watch. And so, you know, you, you can only trade it a, few, um, a certain amount of times before you can't trade it anymore. So anyways, I got the Apple Watch, and it could be traded only one more time. There was one person left. And the last person, you know, you guessed it, they got the Apple Watch. And they gave me, uh, this one guy brought a nice picture frame of himself, uh, of his face, in a picture frame. I said, that's not $50. That's more like $5 from the dollar store. So I was so upset. And so the guy got the Apple Watch. I had this picture frame. And I got, I'm looking at this picture frame. I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. So, like, we go into the rest of the party. I'm kind of disappointed because I really wanted an Apple Watch because I wanted a, a GPS so when I go play golf, I can know how many yards I have to the hole. So I was really pumped about the Apple Watch, but I didn't get it or whatever. I moved on. Life moves on. And so towards the end of the party, the guy says, man, did you, did you enjoy your picture frame that I got for you? I said, to be honest with you, no, I don't want a picture of you uh, in my life. I'm probably going to throw this away when we get home. He said, hey, how about you open the picture frame? So I opened the picture frame. And, you know, like when you kind of you know, open the frame and you like the back of it, there was $500 bills. And initially, I said, I want the Apple Watch. But now I thank God that I lost the Apple Watch. <laughs> because now I got $500. I can buy an Apple Watch and have money left over. And that is how the fast pace versus the kingdom pace works. Initially, it seems like you have lost out. You, you maybe you're not in a relationship. Maybe you're a young adult, and you're like, I want to get in a relationship. I want to, and you compromise, and you, you get into Apple Watch right now. Or you can, you can have standards, godly standards, and you wait a while, and you, and you follow God's ways. And initially, it may seem like you've lost out. But I come to let you know that beyond the picture frame, God has so much more from you. Beyond the self-control, beyond the holiness, beyond the being set apart, beyond the being a woman or man of God, beyond that, there's so much that God has for you. So I'm telling you, I would just implore you today to choose the picture frame over the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch, you can see it, it's awesome and it's, and it's nice and glamorous, but what God has for you is so much more than the instant satisfaction that FOMO wants you to engage in. So much more. So I, I want to encourage you, the team, you can come back up. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I need, I need to be done. So I, I, I want to I, I encourage you a few things. How, so how do you, what do you do right now? We know that we got to have FOMO and we got to reverse the FOMO. We got to have things of God. So how do you reverse it? I'm going to tell you how to reverse it. Number one is that you got to remind yourself of God's goodness. I want you to learn how to remind yourself of God's goodness. We, we got to learn how to remind ourselves on the goodness of God. We got we to remind ourselves that God's plan is so much better than the world's plan. We got to remind ourselves that God is, is, is awesome and he owns a, a, a thousand of cattle and a, and a thousand hills. We, we know that he is, he is in charge of the whole world. He, he can measure the depths of the, earth, of the ocean in the palm of his hand. We, we got to remind ourselves of the goodness of God and that God is good. He's way better than the world and what he can offer you. We got to remind ourselves of that because when life hits you and circumstance hits you and, and hardship hits you, FOMO will make you think, oh, you're missing out on all this stuff that the world is offering. But you got to remind yourself that God can offer so much more for your soul than the world can because God is good. His goodness is endless. It never runs out. It's, it's, it's this unlimited goodness for your life today. I want to encourage you all today. You got to remind yourself of the goodness of God. Number two is that if you're going to reverse it, number one, number two, you got to, you got to remind yourself of your limitations. What you think is good is really not. And so I question myself all the time because here's why I realized that myself would get myself in trouble. And so I question my motivations. I question my desires. I question it because if I'm not, if I'm not 
careful, my flesh can begin to make decisions that would not benefit my soul. Can I tell you today? We got to realize that we are limited. And so, like, you got to slow down, and you only get that in a slow-paced life. Like, if you're moving fast, yourself is making all the decisions. But when you're moving slow, God begins to speak to you. Yeah, I wanted to do that, but let's just do this here. Yeah, that would have been cool, but let's just take our time. Yeah, I want that now, but let's just, let's just wait. God's moving. Opportunities won't run dry. Money won't run dry. Relationships won't run dry. God's there. He's going to be moving. Our God owns everything. So if I move at his pace, I'll be all right. They might be moving faster than me and creating a FOMO on me, but I'll be faithful. Know that, you, know that you're limited, so slow down. My last point is this. So not only do you remind yourself of God's goodness, remind yourself of your limitations, but you got to remind yourself that God will never leave you out. The fear of missing out is that you were like, man, I'm on the outside. They're all at the football game. I'm all here. They're all relationships and I'm single. They all got money and I'm broke. They all got the dream job and I don't. And it's like the fear of being missed out. And I, can, can I tell you that your God is never going to leave you out. No matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, your God is a God who will never leave you out. In fact, he says this, that even when one lamb and one sheep it's left out, one of them, and there's 99 there. He says that he will leave the 99 and he will go after the one because in God's kingdom, you are never left out. He's always there for you. There's no fear of being left on the outside because your God is a God who always pulls you in the inside. You are always in the inside crowd. That's who your God is. So y'all remember that one story <laughs> that Jesus was talking about uh, different principles of the kingdom? And I've been talking about kingdom. I hope you've been realizing that this has been a kingdom series. So he's given different principles of the kingdom. And in one story, he talked about this guy. We call it the, the, the story of the prodigal son. Of this one guy who went to his father and asked for all the inheritance of his father that he was owed. Got the inheritance, went out to the world and spent all of it up so much to the point where he was so broke that he was living where the pigs live and he came to his senses and he realized that though my FOMO led me to a broken place I can still come back home so the Bible says that as he was headed home the father was coming out almost every 30 seconds checking is the son coming back home because a father can't rest well when you are not out, when you are out on the outside. He, he doesn't sleep good when you are on the outside. He, he only sleeps well when you are in your room, in your bed. I remember growing up and my mom, she always said that she, she would fall asleep when we wasn't home, but she really couldn't rest well when we wasn't home. She was restless because she, what could happen to me out there? And that's how the father is. So the father, he sees this son from a ways out and he runs towards the son and embraces the son and grabs the son by his hand and says, no matter what you've done, that you may deserve to be left out, that you may deserve to be on the outside. My grace is so strong. I'm going to bring you to the inside. So even when you deserve to be on the outside, God brings you on the inside. So therefore, when you're in the kingdom of God, there is no fear of missing out when you know that your God is going to have grace upon grace. His, his grace is endless. It is, you cannot outgrow it, out sin it. His grace is endless, and that's what he wants to do for you. So now our FOMO, it's not that we miss out on opportunities because God will never let us miss out on opportunities. God opportunities. Our FOMO is that God, I would hate to choose the world's pace over your pace. 
So for me, to be honest, to be transparent with you, I am not afraid anymore that our church may not be like other churches or grow like other churches or be like other. I, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm afraid that God could be speaking to us and I've been so busy listening to what they're doing. I'm afraid that my FOMO may be the cause of me missing out on something far greater. And so I just want to encourage you today, maybe for you, you've been missing out. You've been missing out on God's presence. So therefore you chose, your FOMO has been working for the world and as a result, you are empty, you're depressed, you're disappointed. Can I tell you, in the presence of God, if you just, there's moments where I have no answer for the church, no answer for our world, no answer as a parent, as a husband, I have no answer sometimes. And when I get into the presence of God, every anxiety, every fear, every issue, it, it's just almost like for a moment of time, it's not even there. And every time I get into the presence of God, I'm like, man, I'm so glad I was there. You know that feeling where you're like, you was like, oh, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. And when you get there, like, oh, I'm so glad I came because I needed that. You can have that feeling every day of your life. So I want to encourage you all today, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter where, where you are in your walk with God, let's reverse the FOMO. Let's fear missing out on the presence of God the purpose of God, the plan of God, the grace of God. So much better than the world and what it can offer to you. In fact, can you all close your eyes right now, bow your heads. I, I, I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to come in your life right now. Maybe you have been missing out. Maybe you're looking at other people's marriage, other people's family, other people's situation, and FOMO has tricked you and I just want to encourage you, where you are is where God wants you. You haven't missed out on the plan of God. I want to encourage your soul right now. God has so much more for you. He has so much in store for you. God, God wants to do some great things in your life, great and mighty things He wants to do in your life. You're not left out. You're not on the outside. He's right there with you. No matter how old, how young, and what season, and how behind you feel, you're right in the plan of God. God, I come against any FOMO that causes us to walk away from you. Let it, let it allow us to walk towards you. I pray for the one watching online that's right now in their home. They feel left out. They feel behind. God, touch them. Remind them that they're not behind. As you're right there with them, Lord. Lord, be there with them, Lord. I pray for the ones right now who wants to give their life to Jesus. God, thank you that you came on this earth, lived a perfect life, so that we don't have to live a perfect life. And we can trust in you for salvation, and you can come into our lives and change us. In fact, I want you all to repeat this prayer to me. Say, dear Jesus, I want you in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Help me to crave at the things of God and not the things of this world. Touch me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Awesome. So good. Hey, I'm excited for the Word of God and, uh, hey, excited for what God is doing in your life. I pray that the Word of the Lord was so strong to you like it was to me in my heart this past week. Hey, I want to encourage you all. Um, as we kind of move forward in our church, man, we're gonna we're gonna be releasing some things, and so I want to come out next week. We got some pretty cool things that we're gonna be talking about, and also uh, wanna just kind of remind you all if you want to give online, you can go to motivation.church/give, and if you're here in the building, want to give, you can give in the back back there. And so, hey, grateful for your generosity. We're making a difference. We're writing checks to all type of missions organizations, and because of what you're giving, so grateful, grateful for you all, and we will see you all next week. God bless you all. Have an amazing week. We love you. God bless.